the housing crash, the housing bubble, the housing collapse. It gets lots of clicks, but I really believe it's the biggest deflection of what's really going on in our housing market right now, which is affordability. Today, we're gonna be breaking down some of the hottest articles when it comes to what they say is the housing crash. And if you are looking for a house right now, I'm gonna be giving you some helpful hints so that way you can win the bid, you can win the house. So without further ado, go ahead and get yourself a large cup of coffee and a pen and paper because you're gonna be taking some notes. Look, I have not talked about a housing crash in over a year. And the reason being is there is no crash. Despite many headlines that you've read and despite as many YouTube videos that keep talking about it, in the year 2022, there is gonna be no crash. Mark my words on it. Hold this video. Hold me accountable at the end of this year. If there's a crash, then you can totally throw me under the bus. According to Realtor.com, the national inventory of active listings declined by 24.5% over the last year, while the total inventory of unsold homes, including pending listings, declined 15.3%. That is a lot of freaking homes. And we already had a housing shortage to begin with. The inventory of active listings was down 62.6% .6 compared to 2020 before the onset of COVID-19. And also according to Realtor.com, in February, the national median listing prices for active listings was $392,000. That's up 12.9% compared to a year ago. And even at the beginning of 2022, they said that the amount of people buying homes was going to slow down exponentially. Well, that statistic was blown out of the water. Water. Naturally, the typical home was spent 47 days on the market, but in February it was down 17 days for the same time last year. So it's down to 32 days on the market. People are still buying homes right now. But who are the people that are actually buying these homes? Well, it's cash buyers. In the last housing crash, it wasn't cash buyers. There were people that had loans and the type of loans that they had were interest only, subprime mortgages, people that should have never gotten a mortgage in the first place and it caused a housing collapse. Right now, there's 122,000 less homes on the market that should be for this time of the year. And the number of active listings and other listings in various stages like pending or under contract is down 15.3%. We just don't have enough homes on the market for the amount of demand, supply and demand. We don't have enough homes, so the houses are going to still continue to increase in price. And that means there is no signs of a housing crash as of yet. The realtors reported today that sales were much stronger than expected, but much of that may be due to investors in the market. They made up 22% of all January sales, up from just 15% a year ago. And investors, of course, tend to use cash. Which this is when you want to get your pen and paper out because this is a really big tip for you because I know a lot of you have said that they put in tons of offers but you cannot get it accepted because you don't have a cash offer. I'm giving my friend 60 seconds. Trevor Smith is going to tell you exactly how you can win a bid with a full cash offer even though you have a loan. Hey Christina, in less than 60 seconds I'm going to show you how to convert your loan into an all cash offer for free. First, we fully underwrite your loan at no cost to you. This means you can close in two weeks even if you don't want to convert your loan to cash and this alone usually helps you win the deal because you stand out from everyone else that needs 30 days to close. Close. Next, you find a house and we're going to do a desktop appraisal to give you a value. Then you write your offer as an all cash assignable contract that will close in two weeks with a 10 day inspection period. The seller accepts your offer because they love cash. You pay for a property inspection and appraisal. We don't mandate repairs. You also deposit 6% of the purchase price in escrow. We try to close your loan prior to us needing to buy the house and we're successful about 80% of the time. And in those cases, there's no cost to you, no hidden fees and no higher interest rate charges. If we have to buy the home, the fee is one point five percent which is much less than ribbon and we charge daily interest until you close which is only a few days in most cases the program is available in over 40 states i'm about to release a video on my channel explaining all the details further so check that out if you want to know more no matter what housing market we're in, things change from month to month. And when it comes to supply chains, we have had issues since the beginning of the pandemic. And if you had told me a month ago we were going to have a war that caused even more problems in the supply chain, you couldn't have put it on my bingo card, let me just put it that way. So what problems could it possibly cause the housing market right now? Well, if you're building a brand new home and you're looking for materials like copper, that's been predicted to be an issue that's going to be coming up in the future. As you know, copper is one of those things that we need in all of our homes for all the wiring. It's also the first thing that people steal when there's an economic crisis. So copper is going to get really expensive. Not only that, there's also going to be a delay in how long it will take for your home to be built. When you have more delays here recently, that means that the cost of the house that you negotiate at the beginning is probably gonna cost more by the time you close on it. If you remember the beginning of 2021, builders had changed the price of homes by the time they got to the closing, sometimes by $100,000 more. And if the buyers couldn't purchase it, there was always somebody else in the wings waiting to buy it. And some of the other reasons that the 
home costs will go up is the price of gasoline has gone up exponentially. If it costs more for the builder to get the building materials to the location itself, that cost goes straight back to the buyer purchasing the house. Now, when it comes to a brand new home, you may not be thinking about building a brand new traditional stick built home. On my channel, I talk about manufactured homes all the time. And my friend Carrie Tarna, who has a YouTube channel as well, follows the pricing of manufactured homes right now. Hey, Christina, to answer your question as to what's going on in the manufactured home industry, basically what we're dealing with is the perfect storm. One of the factories that I talked to was hit with a massive increase right when 2022 hit and they had increases on their materials from 3.5% on carpet up to 50% on lumber. Another factory I talked to has increased their prices 7% this year, but I think their cost increases have gone up far more than that. So I have a feeling we'll be seeing price increases stretching all the way through this year. The other issue we're dealing with right now is backlogs. It wasn't that long ago that I could get a home in four to six weeks, but that definitely isn't the case right now. Most places are gonna be at least six months and lots are gonna be longer than that. One thing people need to look out for right now is what happens if they order the home and before it's built, the factory gives their dealer a price increase. Are they on the hook for that increase or is their price locked in? Even though prices have gone up and the backlogs are way stretched out, I still think in my area, manufactured homes offer a lot of value. So I just ordered a single wide last week, but everywhere is different. So now is definitely a good time to do a little bit more extra research. I want you to see this quote from the National Association of Realtors. More than 400,000 fewer affordable homes are available for sale for households earning 75,000 to 100,000 when compared to the start of the pandemic. 75,000 to $100,000 income can afford, should be able to afford you a nice house. So chew on that for a minute. The next time you think you're going to vote against affordable housing, it isn't the people that are looking for a handout. It's just people that are looking to find a home that's affordable in their area. In my opinion, those are the people that are causing crime in the streets. You know, <laughs> it doesn't really make much sense, does it? Make it make sense for me. There seems to be this expectation out there that's gonna be another strong year for housing despite the inventory situation and rising rates. Now let's talk about mortgage rates. That's been one of those things that's been trickling up and up and up and up and up. But this, this week it went down a little bit. And that is because of everything that's going on in the Ukraine currently. They saw a big dip in how many people were choosing to refinance their house. And they saw a big dip in how many people are actually applying for loans altogether. And even though the Fed said that they were going to be raising interest rates, that doesn't necessarily fall in the same line of what's happening with mortgage rates. So as you see those mortgage rates go down, maybe this is the time for you to go ahead and lock in that rate. And if you're thinking about refinancing, you may want to do that too. Investors using cash are behind much of the inflation in the housing market. Now, when it comes to corporate buyers, there's two camps of people. There are the people that say corporations aren't really doing that much damage to the housing market. They're only buying a few houses in each area. And then there's the camp that I'm sitting on, which is there's plenty of corporations that are buying lots of houses and they're causing a lot of damage because they're buying the least expensive houses in the hottest housing markets that's crippling the first time home buyers that would use those FHA loans and rehabilitation loans to fix up the house for themselves, which would be a good thing for them because they would start to grow their own personal wealth. If it goes in the hands of corporations, that doesn't do anything for the average person that's trying to buy a home. We saw that Zillow made a big financial mistake by buying all these homes at top dollar. But the weirdest part, is even though they're bleeding money, the so-called iBuyer purchased a total of 70,402 homes in 2021. That's double the number purchased in 2019, according to a report from Zillow on Tuesday. Beyond a record number of purchases by iBuying companies, the number of completed home sales was 44,933. Also exceeded the previous high from 2019, which was 28,265. Now, why do corporations buy up as much real estate at this time? Especially when everything's so expensive. Whenever inflation happens, always investment companies invest in real estate. It's the safest place to park their money. So if inflation levels off, will these investment companies start selling off their homes? I don't think so. Everybody's heard of BlackRock and there's tons of investment firms that are building entire neighborhoods just for rent. I have subscribers sending me articles all the time that another neighborhood is being built in their area as a rental community only. So let me break it down for you in simple terms. There will be no housing crash, bubble, or collapse 
collapse this year. Interest rates are gonna go up and down and all over the place this whole entire year. They're gonna be like a ping pong ball. Make sure you lock in when it gets low. And the only way I would purchase a brand new house right now is if it's already complete. Because you run into jeopardy of the fact that it could cost you a lot more than when you put in the contract for that home. If you're thinking about buying a manufactured home, you could run into the same problems if you were buying a traditional stick built home. There's still a massive lack of supply of homes throughout the United States. Home affordability is the biggest issue in this housing crisis right now. It's not a bubble, it's not a collapse, it's a crisis of affordability. And I wanna share this one statistic for you from the National Association of Realtors. Every household earning 75,000 to 100,000, there's only one affordable home for every 65 homes. And I know this is one of those things that every time I talk about affordable housing options, people are out like, start screaming at me. It causes crime in the area. These are people that are earning really good money and they just can't find affordable place to live. Fight me on this, fight me in the comments. So when you see headlines that say housing crash, housing bubble, housing collapse, it's totally 100% a distraction of the fact that we don't have enough affordable homes for people that work really good jobs that have really good incomes. They just can't find an affordable house in the United States. Most people don't wanna talk about the affordability crisis. It's just not as sexy as talking about a housing bubble or collapse. So now that you've seen all this, do you think that you're gonna see housing prices fall this year? Or do you think that we're still gonna be seeing housing prices go up to the moon? Let me know in the comments section below. To watch more videos about the affordability crisis here in the United States, go ahead and click these videos right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.